myself, my name is Frank Gabman. I am a PhD student at the Hamburg University. I'm also a uh, DevOps engineer at uh, Der Spiegel, this is a known uh, publishing house uh, here in Germany. And since I have every day some kind of interaction with the cloud, uh, that's why I decided to uh, tackle the conversions uh, between HPC, high performance computing, and cloud in my PhD work, mainly focusing on the storage part. Uh, today we will be addressing S3 performance inside HPC. Uh, and I will start by introducing S3. Right. Okay, what's actually S3? S3 is the Amazon Simple Storage Service. You can see the tree S. This is why it's called S3. It was launched back in 2006. It's an online cloud storage service that you can access from almost any device. So if your device can do HTTP, then you can interact with S3 using uh, simple HTTP methods like get, put, delete, and so on. So S3 is a REST service. Uh, you can send requests uh, using the REST API or the provided SDK wrapper library. Uh, S3 introduces the concept of buckets. Uh, data is stored uh, in containers called buckets. You can think of it as like a parent folder or a folder. And each bucket has its own set of policies and configuration and must have a unique name. Uh, an object is a fundamental data entity in S3. It's like a file and this file has like uh, different uh, metadata or file info. And also S3 is a product from Amazon. However, it's also a storage API. It's an open standard. Uh, many standard emerged to enable the interoperability and portability of data in the cloud. To mention a few like OpenStax, uh, Swift, or the CDMI, the Cloud Data Management Interface. However, uh, S3 is the uh, most widely adopted. It's actually the de facto storage standard for the object uh, storage in the cloud. And most of the major cloud providers offers an S3 interface on top of their own cloud storage. And many on-premises storage solutions provide S3 compliance. Uh, what's interesting for us is the performance of S3 inside an HPC environment. And to what extent S3 uh, is a viable alternative for HPC uh, workloads. I'll be moving on slide. Uh, but before doing that, uh, yeah, I can take my slide. Okay, For doing that, and as I've already mentioned, S3 is, a, is based on HTTP or REST. Uh, and this is why in a previous work, uh, we investigated the REST overhead inside HPC. Actually, if you search for the term REST overhead inside HPC, you will uh, likely uh, find our, our uh, previous paper on this matter. Uh, there we defined a performance model based on hardware counters, and we validated this model. Uh, we also uh, came to the conclusion that if the same transport protocol is used, in this case TCP, uh, a REST can provide similar latency and throughput to native HPC protocols like MPI, while of course enabling uh, better portability. HTTP is used everywhere. And in the recent years, we uh, we saw an evolution of uh, the HTTP protocol. Maybe you have heard of the new standard, HTTP2 and HTTP3. And those standards might uh, have potential to improve the REST performance. To the next slide. Now that we know that REST is a viable option for HPC workloads, let's now address the performance of the S3 itself. Uh, because if S3 performance is good enough, this would be a huge milestone towards achieving the convergence between uh, HPC and cloud. Uh, however, the performance of S3 inside HPC uh, didn't get any attention or got uh, too little attention. 
uh, most work done till now only focused on the download performance of S3. This might be relevant for static websites where the user have little interaction or only need to read access to the object or the files. Uh, however, inside HPC, uh, we are playing at another level. Uh, most researchers, researchers never published uh, or described the used tool. And the most found tools are not able to uh, assess S3 uh, compatible storage, uh, the one provided from other provider than, uh, than Amazon. So what did we do? And how did we do it? Uh, because the found tools do not provide a detailed latency profile, nor do they support parallel operation across many nodes, which is a key characteristic for HPC application and the lack of uh, published uh, tools that cover HPC workload pushed us to enhance to uh, open source benchmarks uh, that are already used for HPC procurement, uh, namely IO500 and MD Workbench. I will explain how they work uh, later. Uh, and using those modified uh, benchmarks, we were able to uh, perform many tests against on-premises S3 implementation, like the one provided by OpenStack Swift, or menu and against cloud provider like Google, IBM, or Wasabi. Uh, and we also explored the possibility to leverage existing HPC file system. Actually, if you want to implement an S3 solution on premises, uh, you should heavily invest in hardware infrastructure, or you can use open source software like uh, menu that publish an S3 interface on top of the existing storage. Uh, we defined uh, different uh, comparison metrics or the metrics. Uh, these are the latency, this is the time taken by request or the throughput, the rate at which the data is transferred. And uh, one important factor is scalability uh, inside HPC. Uh, this actually is the ability to handle a growing amount of requests or of load by just adding uh, uh, more resources. Uh, in using those factors, we were able to identify the performance bottlenecks inside the uh, implementation. And uh, as such, we were able to provide alternative S3 implementations. This is called S3 Embedded that I will explain. Uh, that Let me start by explaining the, how IO500 and uh, MD Workbench works. Work. Uh, IO500 uses IOR and MD test to perform various workloads and uh, delivers a single score for comparison. Uh, the different access patterns are covered in a different phase. IO Easy simulates uh, application with well optimized IO pattern. IO Hard simulates applications that utilize segmented input to shared file. MD Easy or Metadata Easy simulate uh, metadata access. Uh, this is relevant in HPC uh, in HPC environment since some HPC application do extensive uh, metadata or file info lookup and MD Hard uh, access uh, assess uh, is a phase where uh, small files are accessed in a shared packet in this case. On the other hand, MD Workbench simulates concurrent access to data object and uh, report throughput and latency statistics, uh, which we'll use later to draw some uh, density graph. Uh, it consists of three phase, recreation, benchmark, and cleanup. What we did is actually uh, we uh, implemented an S3 uh, model based on lib S3. This is a well-known S3 uh, wrapper library. Uh, uh, C language, and as such, we were able to uh, conduct benchmarks against uh, against S3 or S3 compliant uh, interfaces. Uh, let's see the benchmarks in action. First of all, uh, and mainly due to its ease of installation, we do some preliminary testing using Minio, which is a software uh, that provides an S3 compatible interface. Uh, commonly used file system. Uh, as you can see in the pictures, the standalone mode runs on one menu server on one node with a single storage device. The distributed mode or server mode runs on multiple nodes. 
uh, and uh, where object data and parity are struck across, against uh, across all disk in all nodes, and the data is protected using uh, erasure coding and bit protection. And all objects in on those sticks are accessible from all uh, server nodes. Uh, and the final mode is a gateway mode that has uh, S3 compatibility to an already existing. Uh, we use Mistral uh, because uh, I'm, I was conducting the research uh, on. Uh, I used Lustre as a, as a back end uh, because I was conducting the research on Mistral as a center, uh, provided by German Climate Research Center. Uh, right. Just to get a feeling on how S3 performs, uh, we conducted here uh, several tests on uh, using uh, the IOR uh, benchmark. And you can see on top the different uh, menu modes. Uh, they are run on uh, one node using one process per node. Uh, and uh, we uh, noticed that the standalone modes uh, shows the best performance. The gateway mode is effective for reads. Uh, however, it's slow for it's very slow for write, uh, as you can see in uh, in this picture. As I said, this is like to get uh, some feeling on how uh, S three performs. Uh, then. We investigated how much. Parallel input output is able to exploit the available network to uh, bandwidth by just varying the number of uh, clients uh, accessing the object store. Uh, and assuming though an ideal scenario uh, where uh, menu started in uh, standalone mode with RAM as backend on one node, uh, we started uh, IOR on another four node while varying the number of process per node. And we can see that when increasing the process per node or the file size, we are saturating the network bandwidth, which in our case around six gigabytes. The write performance is around the half of what we have seen uh, for the read access. Uh, and one point, one thing to note here: uh, these results are very good. However, this is not a feasible real world scenario because as you know the RAM size is limited and RAM is very expensive. A more realistic scenario inside HPC is actually menu running in gateway mode in front of the cluster. Uh, first, we launched the benchmarks on FIA uh, on four client nodes, and Minu started in gateway modes on another set of uh, four nodes. We call this disjoint gateway mode. However, this stuff doesn't scale out efficiently. I mean, you need like the double uh, number of nodes to to achieve uh, to achieve this. And uh, this leads us to the introduction of another concept, which we call local gateway mode, where Minu started on the on end client in gateway mode and using the uh, Luster file system as a backend node, and the client can access uh, the local host to, uh, to obtain to, to uh, the S3 interface in this case. Uh, we can see that this introduced mode uh, performs better than the disjoint mode. However, it's still very poor, as you can see on the right. It's still very poor uh, in comparison. Uh, And as mentioned earlier, we used MD Workbench to to draw some density graph. A density graph can be considered can be considered a smooth histogram, where the x axis shows the observed runtime and the uh, y axis represents the uh, number of occurrence. This is the density graph for a luster. Uh, we notice that the create phase is the most time consuming. Uh, most of the operations are taking more than uh, 
or around uh, 10 milliseconds. This is like 10 times slower in comparison to the uh, stat phase, uh, which is taking around millisecond. Uh, the same is done for the menu disjoint gateway mode. Uh, as we saw earlier, this is this wasn't good enough. And uh, yeah, we can see that the create phase is like taking a relatively very long time, and it's like 1,000 times slower than uh, than last. Uh, the local gateway mode uh, is better. However, it's still uh, very slow, and it's not like uh, it's, it's far away from the baseline network uh, performance, which is around uh, 10 microseconds every uh, request. And now we move to the uh, we did some tests against Swifter, Swift S3, uh, and it wasn't also very good. We, we saw, we, we can see that it has a poor performance. That's the next slide. Okay, we contact a different cloud provider, uh, and we uh, chose the closest storage location to Mistral in the EU to ensure the lowest latency. Uh, however, due to the limited numbers of uh, nodes uh, with internet connectivity on Mistral, the bench only on two nodes with one process per nodes. Uh, the results are summar summarized in the table. Uh, and for comparison, the results of Minio are uh, also displayed here. But just for comparison, and uh, see that the IBM cloud storage uh, delivers the best performance. However, this is far from the performance expected. And as seen earlier, uh, earlier, even the introduced local gateway mode was showing lots of timeout error when increasing the number of clients. Uh, this has led us to the creation of an input-output library called S3 Embedded. It's based on libs3, uh, where parts of the S3 stack were replaced or removed uh, just to optimize the performance. Uh, we actually have two uh, libraries, libs 3 e uh, This is an embedded library. Uh, it converts libs 3 calls to POSIX calls. It runs on the same node, uh, and we have the libs3 remote, which converts the libs3 calls via binary conversion to HCP calls uh, to a local or a remote libs3 gateway application that then executes this POSIX calls by passing the HTTP protocol, as you can see in this slide. Jump to the 500 results for a stream embedded. Uh, as I already mentioned, the local gateway mode suffers from timeout, and this is why, after many iteration, the IO 500 didn't finish properly. Uh, this is why you some 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 values are missing here. Uh, on the other hand, our S3 wrapper uh, delivers, delivers a much scalable performance uh, closer to the uh, last native performance and, uh, uh, of course, more resilient to the number of clients. We also wanted to compare uh, S3 embedded to uh, to the performance using iperf on REST, native REST, and uh, we end up, uh, we can see that the S3 embedded uh, is close enough to a direct RAM access. Uh, we launched those uh, uh, tests on one node with uh, tempfs or RAM as backend. Uh, uh, however, we can also see that S3 embedded remote needs uh, to be, uh, need to be optimized.
and in this slide, next slide. We, uh, we have done many iteration of our uh, of our setup uh, using five nodes and 20 process per nodes uh, just to compare ST embedded cluster access and as you can see in this uh, radar chart uh, we can see that the performance uh, scalability the scalability and the stability of ST embedded is close enough to to last and we can also see that's uh, better performing for the IOR have are the right uh, test. Slide. The next slide. As a conclusion, I can say that by extending two open source uh, benchmarks, IO500 and MD Workbench, uh, to benchmark the SG interface, we were able to broaden the scope of IO500 usage and enable the community to track the performance growth of uh, S3 and also to share performance optimization uh, best practices. Uh, we found that the tested implementation are not yet suitable for HPC workload. Uh, however, we, uh, we have an alternative, it's S3 embedded and uh, just a drop-in replacement for lib S3. Uh, as such, we can, any application that uh, uses S3 in the cloud can move seamlessly to the to HPC just by sh changing the link library. And this will uh, lead to a seamless convergence between HPC and cloud. This feature work, uh, we intend to or IO500 tests against cloud provider or against in-house implementation and of course S3 S3 library. Uh, any contributions are welcomed. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions. I I am happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Thanks, Frank. Um, can you say one sentence or two about the open source relevance? Um, of your research, how important is open source for you? Actually, we are using only open source tools. Uh, as I mentioned, IO500 and MD Workbench are open source tools. We, uh, we optimize those uh, benchmarks uh, enabled to, uh, to test S3. And the S3 embedded library is also an open source library that everybody can access and uh, can contribute to. So actually, we are doing only open source in this case, and we don't have any problem sharing our uh, research uh, results and our code. Thank you very much.